Elhamdülillah, eşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike ele. Praise be to God, I bear witness that there is no God but one God and he has no partners. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. In today's sermon, I want to talk about confidence in God, God willing. Let's think about confidence. Dictionary has about uh, 65 different uh, synonyms and meanings for confidence, but trust is the aspect uh, we are talking about and we are focusing in this sermon about trust in God. And we're going to use uh, trust and confidence reversibly. What are the requirements of having confidence to an entity? What is the opposite of confidence or trust? Can we get close to someone or having a strong bond with if we don't have confidence in him? In order to trust someone, we need to know him and know him well. The more we know someone and as we found better qualities in him, we trust him more. Kids strongly attach and trust their parents. Why? Because they know them well and have trust in them. They are confident that their parents love them and will satisfy their needs. They will take care of them no matter what. So knowing is the drive of confidence, the foundation of confidence. And about confidence in God, we want to get close to God. We need to know him. We, know, we need to know who God is. 88.117, God is doing everything. It was not you who killed them. God is the one who killed them. It was not you who threw what you threw. God is the one who threw. But he does put, but he does gives the believers a chance to earn a lot of credit. God is here, omniscient. And the footnotes of 8.17 says, Believing in God necessitates believing in his qualities. One of which is that he is doing everything. Without knowing God, there is no belief. And it talks about 24 to 90 and continues, Bad things are incurred by us and executed by Satan in accordance with God's will. And refers to 478 to 79 and 4230. Then after uh, knowing who God is, one can have confidence and trust in him. Therefore, knowing God is the key for our salvation. And without knowing God, truly, believe will never be established. Hence, why majority of believers who claim believing God will end up in hell? 23 AD 4 to 89. Most believers are distant to, for hell. Say, to whom belongs the earth and everything on it? If you know. The footnote says, belief in God valid only if one recognizes qualities, such as the fact that God controls everything. Believers who do not know God are not really believers. Most believers nullify their belief by idolizing such powerless idols as the prophets and saints. 2385, they will say to God, say, why didn't do you not take heed? 86. Who is the Lord of the seven? The Lord of the great dominion. 87. They will say, God, say, why then do you not uh, turn righteous? Say, in whose hand is all sovereignty over the things? And he is the only one who can provide help but needs no help, if you know. They will say, God, say, where 
did you go wrong? What does it mean uh, when we are asking who God is? We know God by knowing his qualities such as knowing that he runs everything, controls every atom in the universe and the earth, that he is omnipotent and controls every cell in our body, and reflecting on God's quality is the best meditation. God's attributes are mentioned in Quran in very frequently. I did a search uh, and I found in uh, a lot of locations four, 487 uh, uh, verses after uh, it says God is and usually it's at the end of the verses it brings the God's quality I try to extract those and bring them here and reading them to me I mean anytime I, I kept reading it a few times it just boosts my uh, you know uh, 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 belief and whatever you know, anyways uh, some of these attributes is just one. Some of them combine two together. Some of them is like a sentence describing an attribute, describing a quality. I'm going to, uh, it's about 40 more, but it's worth going o over that. Um, and uh, some of them are, uh, as you guys uh, know, uh, repeated in the Quran a lot. So we start with God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is most gracious. God is merciful. God is appreciated. This, uh, during the, just reading this and reflecting, something just clicked for me about, uh, I, I was thinking before when we're talking, God is appreciated. Who we are that God be appreciated of us. Then, I went, uh, then I, I, when I thought a little bit more, I remembered that, um, I, I just thought that, hey, appreciation sometimes when you acknowledge somebody did something good or uh, validate something or uh, give the value of somebody did some work for you, this is appreciation. Appreciation doesn't mean uh, like Japanese just bow down and it could be just, uh, 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 you know, just saying that, you know, you did a good work. That's appreciation. So this is what God means by appreciation. Six, forgiver, clement, hearer, knower. God is almighty, most wise. God is, God is bounteous. God is rich, clement, price worthy. God is avenger. God is best schemer. God is pardoner. God is the only supporter. God is the only protector. God is ultimate ruler. God, uh, God is high, supreme. God is sub sublime. God is truth. God is most efficient in recognition. God is the provider and possessor of all power. God is the possessor of infinite grace. God is aware of innermost thoughts. God is compassionate toward people. God is with those who steadfastly prefer, preserve. God is with the righteous. God is strict in enforcing retribution. God is the only one who guides. God is seer of his worshiper. God is most strict in recognizing. God is aware of most innermost thoughts. God is watching over us. God is doer of everything. God is, full, God is in full control of all things. God is only protector. God is your final destiny. God is on the side of believers. God is never unjust toward creatures. Remember here it says creatures. It just, it's not just human. God is uh, never unjust toward creatures. God judges and the best judge. God is kind toward the believers. God is in no need of anyone. God is creator of all things and control all things. God is provider and possessor of all powers. God is possessor of infinite grace. God is aware of innermost thoughts. The takeaway from this first part of my sermon is that we have to be very conscious of all these attributes of God and make sure we are reflecting on them. 
And the way we can know if we are believer in all these qualities is by reflecting to see if we have peace, security, contentment, no fear, no grief, with complete trust and confidence in him. More we know God and uh, know the qualities of God's attribute, we get closer to these conditions. And lack of these qualities in our lives must mean more vigorous reflection and self-examination and reformation on our part so that we can be redeemed. I myself need to reflect on this more. God willing. Tuba Allah. Let's repent. Alhamdulillah, ashadan la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Praise to be to God. I bear witness that there is no God but one God and he has no partners. Victory for believers. Uh, I would like to talk about victory in my second sermon. Victory for believers. In the last surah revealed uh, by God, He promises that the victory belongs to the believers. There is a whole lot going on in this world today in different places. And instead of getting frustrated with everything that is going on today and the many culture wars that we are currently in, we should wholeheartedly turn to God and ask for his support and victory over the disbelieving people. God has a plan and we know that He is the best schemer. There is a reason why things that are happening are happening. We do our part and God will do the rest. We learn from Surah 110 that victory is surely come. One ten, one through three. When triumph comes from God and victory, you will see that the people embracing God's religion in throngs. You shall glorify and praise your Lord and implore him for forgiveness. He is the redeemer. God makes it very clear who will come out victorious at the end. If you like stories that end well, you love submission. On the great themes of our faith in hope and triumph and unshakable assurance that things will end up right, in the midst of struggles and storms, battles and trials, we focus focus beyond the present moment and we see victory. We see relief because in the end, God wins. Let's look at 313. Where God tells us that the support with his victory, whoever he wills. Believers, the ultimate victors. An example has been set for you by the two armies who clashed. One army was fighting in the cause of God while the other was disbelieving. They saw with their own eyes that they were twice as many. God supports with his victory whomever he wills. This should provide an assurance for those who possess vision. And some verses from Bible, Deuteronomy 24. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you the victory. I would like to read this piece from a submitted perspective 
that the messenger of the covenant wrote about victory. The title is Victory When? Question mark. Uh, I just read the portion of it, but I have it if you want uh, to refer to it. The last revelation in Quran was Surah 110, entitled Victory, Al Nasr. The surah consists of 19 words. The first verse, God's victory will surely come, consists of 19 Arabic letters. Since we are the generation of believers blessed with God's 19 based miracle, this verse is talking about us. Victory belongs to us. That's the end of the uh, perspective. There is a lot, but we don't have time to go over it. Going against the crowd and popular opinion is not easy, specifically if you are young. <coughs> peer pressure is a real issue. Even in our older generation, peer pressure is present. And we can see and witness it in the uh, recent years in our society. It's easier to go with the majority and blend in than stand up for what you believe in. Sometimes we may feel that the disbelievers are getting their way, but it's important to take a step back and remember that God guarantees that believers will be the victorious ones and the disbelievers will lose. God in Surah uh, 108 2 says, Therefore, you shall pray to your Lord Salat and give to charity. Three, your opponent will be losers. God guarantees that our opponents will be losers. We have so many examples in Quran, like 7 1 28. Moses said to his people, Seek God's help and is steadfastly preserved. The earth belongs to God, and he grants it to whomever he chooses from among his servants. The ultimate victory belongs to the righteous. Victory guaranteed for the believers. 8.10. God gave you this good news to strengthen your hearts. Victory comes only from God. God is almighty most wise. 819. You sought victory, O disbelievers, and victory did come. It belonged to the believers. If you refrain from aggression, it would be better for you. But if you return, so will we. Your armies will never help you, no matter how great. For God is on the side of the believers. Although as believers we are in the minority, we have to remember that God is on our side. Believers will get their way by God's lead. Next time you come across an obstacle at work or school or in your personal life, Remember that God is omnipotent and powerful. And as long as you are with God, he will help you get through the obstacle and get your way. Believers will get their way in life and will be the winners. Let's uh, talk about David and Goliath for a minute. 250. When they faced Goliath and his proofs, troops, they prayed, I Lord, grant us steadfastness, straighten our foothold, and support us against the disbelieving people. 250, 251. They defeated them by God's leave, and David killed Goliath. God gave him kingship and wisdom and taught him as he will. If it were not for God's support of some people against others, 
there would be chaos on earth. But God showers his grace upon the people. In Bible, uh, in 1 Samuel 17, you see the details of this story. We learned that Goliath was a giant guy, was well equipped for war with sword, spear, javelin, shields, and such. And David was a young boy with his stone in his hand. But what he had was faith in God. Therefore, he had God's support and was able to defeat Goliath. In verse 45 of uh, the same chapter, uh, this is what David tells Goliath. David said to Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This is a truly a beautiful story that shows how powerful God is and how God will always support his people. In order to become victorious, though, we need to make sure that we are doing our part. So how do we receive support from God? We learn from 2240 that God supports those who support him. 2240, they were evicted from their homes unjustly for no reason other than saying our Lord is God. If it were not for God's supporting of some people against others, uh, monasteries, churches, synagogues, and masjid, where the name of God is commem commemorated frequently, would have been destroyed. Absolutely. God supports those who support him. God is powerful, almighty. But how do we support God? We support God by following his commandments. Being righteous, dedicating our worship to him alone, and always standing firm on the side of God. We learn that victory belongs to the righteous. 3137, victory for the righteous. Presidents have been set for you in past. Roam the earth and note the consequences for the believers. Unbelievers or disbelievers will get consequences at the end of, at the end. And believers will always be victorious. This is something that we need to always remember and trust that will happen. 826, God supports the believers. Remember that you used to be a few, you used to be few and oppressed, fearing that the people may snatch you and he granted you a secure sanctuary, supported you with his victory and provided you with good provisions that you may be appreciated. There are so many uh, examples of God's support for the believers in the Quran. There are some powerful prayers on believers asking for God's support, like meditation, uh, 1779. Meditation was it that. During the night, you shall meditate for extra credit that your Lord may raise you to an honorable rank, and 80, and say, my Lord, admit me an honorable admittance, and let me depart an honorable departure, and grant me from you a powerful support. May we always remain guided, and to our part, and do our part, so we can attain victory now and forever. Uh, let's pray. Allahu 
نوبت سلط الزو الله اكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كن عبد ويا كن استعين اهتنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله اكبر سمع الله كل من حمد الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله اكبر سمع الله كل من حمد الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر السلام عليكم السلام عليكم